For this lesson, we are going to be focusing our attention on examples where there is more than one step in order to isolate a variable to solve. Here I have three different examples of single step equations, where we only need one step in order to solve for our missing variable. For 3y equals 18, in order to isolate for y, we want to get rid of the 3 that's in front of the y. Currently it's multiplying. So in order to get rid of it, we divide by 3. But remembering that we need to balance our equations so that the left side is always in balance with the right side, we must do the same step that we do on the left with the right. So we will divide by 3 on the right side as well. What this accomplishes is we can now cancel out or reduce the threes on the left side, so we're only left over with y. And now we can divide 18 and 3 so that the right side is equal to 6. For our second example, the n, our missing variable, is being divided by 3. In order to get rid of that 3, we do the opposite operation on the left side, but also on the right side as well. Since it's being divided by 3, the opposite operation would be to multiply by 3. But whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other side as well. The 3's here cancel, and I'm just left with n on the left side, and negative 4 multiplied by 3, which is negative 12 on the right side. For our last example, x plus 3 equals 9. The opposite operation to adding 13 is subtracting 13. I'm going to subtract 13 from the left side, but also subtract 13 from the right side. The 13's on the left side will cancel, leaving me just with x. The right side, 9 subtract 13 equals negative 4. So we're left with x equals negative 4. Those three examples showed us ways in which we can add, subtract, multiply, or divide in order to isolate for our unknown variable. When isolating for an unknown variable, we use opposite operations. Let's take a look at some examples now that use multiple steps in order to isolate or solve for our unknown variable. In this example, we need to find the root of the equation, then check our solution. Finding the root of the equation is the same thing as finding the solution to the equation. Or what's the answer to our unknown variable that allows the left side and the right side to be equal? 5x plus 25 equals 500. Now we could guess and check to see what value for x would allow the left side to equal the right side, but we're going to use opposite operations in order to isolate for x. When isolating for a variable, we still think of bed mass, our order of operations. Brackets and exponents, division and multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. But when we isolate for a variable, we do these steps in reverse order. So we're first going to start by looking for subtraction and addition, then look for any division and multiplication, and finally worry about any exponents and then brackets. Right now, the x is being multiplied by 5 and also added to with 25. So in order to isolate for x, we want to do backwards bed mass which would mean that we would do the addition part first and then we'll worry about the multiplication part. Let's start by getting rid of the 25. In order to get rid of 25, I need to do the opposite operation. So I need to subtract 25 from both sides. 5x plus 25, but then subtract 25 will equal 500, and whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other, so subtract 25. When we simplify this, we end up with 5x all by itself on the left side, as the 25 and negative 25 will cancel out, 
and then 500 subtract 25 on the right side. Now I've left this like this on purpose without doing the subtraction because I want you to notice what happens between the first and last steps. We can see that the 25 that used to be on the left hand side has now been moved over to the right hand side with the opposite operation. Positive 25 was on the left, but now it's negative 25 on the right. This is a simple rule in mathematics that says that any addition that crosses over an equal sign will turn into a subtraction on the other side. Or if a subtraction is on one side, if it moves over to the other side of an equal sign, it will become addition. This is really helpful to know when we're trying to isolate for a variable. 500 subtract 25 equals 475. Now we have 5 multiplied by x. So the opposite operation here is to divide by 5. But remembering we need to do the same thing on one side as we do to the other. Both 5's will cancel with each other, leaving us with just x on the left hand side. And 475 divided by 5 is 95. Our next step is to check to see or verify whether x equals 95 is the correct answer. In math, the proper way to do this is to use a left side, right side check. To perform a proper left side, right side check, we must look at our original question and see what part of the equation was on the left side of the equal sign and what part was on the right. The left side was equal to 5x plus 25. The right side was equal to 500. Because we can't assume that the left side will always equal the right side, we must check and prove that when we substitute our unknown variable x with its actual number, that the left side, when worked out, will actually equal the right side. So we make this nice t graph so that we can separate the left side and right side. It sort of acts as a reminder that we don't ever want to cross any of our calculations over from one side to the, to the other. We simply want to simplify and solve each side on their own. The right side is already solved. It equals 500. But what happens when we put 95 in where x goes? When we substitute a number, we always put it in brackets, remembering that brackets represent multiplication. 5 times 95 equals 475 plus 25, and 475 e plus 25 equals 500. There we have it. The left side and the right side are both equal. So we end off our left side, right side check by saying, therefore, the left side equals the right side. Let's try one more example. Solve and check the following. Negative 4m subtract 6 equals 12. We currently have two operations that are working on m. A multiplication with negative 4 and a subtraction with negative 6. When we want to isolate for m, we're going to use backwards bed mass. So the first thing to look at is the subtract 6. I don't want it on that side anymore. So we can effectively move it over to the right-hand side by doing the opposite operation. Negative 4m will remain on the left side. 12 is on the right side. But now we will do the opposite operation, positive 6, or plus 6, over onto the right side. This would be the same mathematical move as adding 6 to both sides. Notice adding 6 to the left side will simply eliminate it from the left side, and then adding 6 to the right side will add 6 to what was previously there. 12 plus 6 is 18, so we can say negative 4m will equal 18. In order to get m by itself now, if it's being multiplied by negative 4, we need to divide by negative 4, but on both sides. Negative 4 and negative 4 will both cancel, 
So we'll just be left with m. 18 divided by negative 4. Well, 18 and or 4 doesn't go into 18 evenly, so we're going to be left with a fraction. Let's leave our answers in fraction form, but as reduced as possible. So 18 and 4 are both visible by 2, so we can reduce both of these by 2. And what's left is 9 over negative 2. But let's also remember that a negative sign should never stay in the denominator. So we're going to put the negative sign out front, negative 9 over 2. Remember, another proper way is to just put the negative sign in the numerator. Either way is correct. Now that we've solved for m, let's use a left side right side check in order to make sure that we're right. The left side started with negative 4m minus 6. The right side was 12. The right side's already been solved, so let's just leave it the way it is. The left side, we can now substitute in our value for m, which was negative 9 over 2. Negative 4 multiplied by negative 9 over 2. Subtract 6. Negative 4 times negative 9 over 2 is easier to solve if we remember that negative 4 is the same thing as writing negative 4 over 1. Now we can cross cancel or, or reduce any numerator with any denominator. So 9 can't be reduced with 2 or 1, but 4 can be reduced with 2. So I'm going to reduce this down to 2, or negative 2, and reduce this now down to 1. So negative 2 multiplied by negative 9 is positive 18. Don't forget to subtract 6, and 18 subtract 6 is 12. The left side equals the right side, so we'll put a little therefore statement, just making sure that we know that we were correct. Multi-step equations aren't that difficult as long as we follow the simple rule that we always do the opposite operations when moving one number from one side to the other and perform our operations using backwards bed mass. Ooh.